everyone and welcome to today's video. I hope you're all well and healthy. Today I thought I'm going to challenge myself so I decided to paint this purple mountain and show you guys the process of creating this piece step by step. So it's more kind of a come paint with me than a I know when I'm doing kind of video. I will be doing this painting in oils except for the background layer but you can definitely do this in acrylics as well just adjusting a few steps. I will try and guide you along the way so if you try this in acrylics keep an eye on the screen for further instructions and recommendations. So over here I have my 12 by 12 inch canvas and we are going to create this purple pink snowy mountain but before I'm going over the materials that I'm going to use I'm just quickly going to paint my first layer in acrylic paint so it can dry. You can use literally any brush, use your favorite brush for background painting and then we're gonna need some acrylic burnt sienna. I'm going to take my brush and dip it in some water, not dry, dry out the brush and then mix the water of the brush with the acrylic paint to create a thin transparent layer of paint on the canvas. As you can see I already drew out the mountain to get the composition of the painting and whatsoever. Luckily the drawing part of the mountain is pretty straightforward. The challenge for me is actually the painting part. If you would like the sketch of the mountain it will be available on my Instagram story under tutorials. So you can head over there to get a screenshot of the sketch. If your brush dries and your paint gets a little darker at the canvas, just dip your brush into some more water and mix it with the paint. If you were wondering why I chose the burnt sienna for the background color, it's because the whole painting will be this blues and purples and pinks we're going to use. So obviously the complementary colors of blue and purple is either orange or yellow. So burnt sienna I think is just a nice color to complement those colors um, in the areas that it will shine through. So now that the background is covered, I am taking a piece of paper towel and I'm going to erase certain parts of the background layer in the sky um, where the sun will hit the clouds. And just taking my finger to try and blend out the sharp edges a little. Now taking the paper towel and wipe my brush dry, dry as possible and then blending the highlighted areas very softly like this just to soften that very harsh edges. Switching to a smaller brush I am going to use the number 10 flat brush and burn center with no water or much less water to add in some darker shades in the mountain. So as you can see, I'm doing it very roughly, um, no perfect lines, it's basically just to give the idea of where your shadows will be.
now that that is all done let's go over some needed supplies for the oil colors I'm going to use titanium white lamb black French ultramarine blue cadmium red cadmium yellow the pale hue and cobalt violet you can also use a different darkish purple or mix your own then two containers for turpentine one with clean turpentine and one for cleaning your brushes in paper towel or a cloth i like to use this old bathroom towel then a palette knife for mixing your paint then our brushes is going to be the small detail brush this is a round brush number one and number six flat brush a small angled brush a round flat brush number four and then of course my all-time favorite overused blending brushes you can also use a mop brush this is actually how it looks before and after we'll also be using this one it's a round flat moving on to mixing our palette colors if you are doing this in acrylics i would recommend mixing your colors as you go unless you are making use of a slow drying medium or use a method to keep your paint wet for longer so i'm actually going to mix a few colors so prepare yourself for a few minutes of mixing paint starting off with our white adding then cadmium red and yellow and purple in small amounts needs a little bit more red very tiny amount you can rather add more if you feel like it but it's not easy to remove now taking about a third of that color adding more purple and red to create a more pink variant might need a little bit more red like that wiping my palette knife clean to start a new color taking cobalt purple like this and white about the same amount and then add a tiny bit of red maybe even a little bit more red of yellow mix it together and that's a nice color now taking about 50% of that and add some titanium white Also just gonna add a bit of more purple. Now for a bit darker, we take cobalt purple again, titanium white and add a bit of ultramarine blue. Like this. Then I want just a bit more cadmium red. And a bit of yellow as well, just to warm it up a tiny bit. And also a little bit more purple to darken it slightly. 
then taking half of this purple color and then adding more ultramarine blue and cobalt purple. Just a tad more blue. Now for some much darker shades, we will mix titanium white with ultramarine blue, a very small amount of black. And then just a bit of purple. For another color, we take a tip of cadmium red, mixed with a double amount of purple. Same amount of white and mix it all together. I want it a little warmer, so I will add a little bit more red and a bit of yellow. Then a bit of ultramarine blue to break the bright red. And then we get this kind of dull pink red color. Just want to lighten up again. Now again taking purple, red, yellow, ultramarine blue and white, have a nice look at the ratio, blue and red is about the same amount and less than the other colours. Okay, so now I just want to mix a yellow. Just want to break the vibrancy with some purple. And just a dark red as well. Now for a very dark blue, I will take purple and ultramarine blue, same amount and a tiny amount of black and also a very small amount of white. Then taking a small amount of that and adding more purple and a bit of cadmium red and also just lightening it up with a bit of titanium white. Just a few more. <laughs> um, I want a light but bright pinky color, so mixing titanium white and cadmium red, adding a tiny amount of blue. And a bit more white.
Now let's take some ultramarine blue and a small amount of titanium white. Add some black for our darker shade. Darker shade. So to break the blue, I'm just going to add some red as well. And some more red, blue and black to make it even darker. And then even a darker, almost black shade by mixing red, ultramarine, blue and black. But I want the shade more on the brown side, so I will add more red. taking a bit of this color and adding more cadmium yellow and also more red and then also just a tad white for a lighter brown Okay, so looking at this, I feel this color isn't quite right. Let's see. Adding some purple and some cadmium red. These two are way too similar, so also gonna add more black to this one. Yes, this seems a bit better. Now we can finally start on the actual painting. So starting off with this number 10 round flat, I am dipping it in clean turpentine to wet the brush. Just pressing against the side to dry out the excess turpentine in the brush. And then starting with our lightest color, this almost like, I don't know, peachy color. I will start with the less intimidating part, the sky. <laughs> so as you can see here, my paint is very transparent. Um, it's because my brush is still way too wet. It shouldn't be completely dry, but mine is way too wet. So I'm just going to dry my brush some more on a paper towel. Now this is much better. So starting with these highlighted areas where basically the light will fall on the clouds.
Now moving to our next coloring line I'm basically just going to paint this color just above or next to our first color Not mixing or blending it right now um, unless you are painting with acrylic paints Okay, now taking our light purple and we're just gonna add it here and there you will see on the canvas it looks very similar to our color but this will just add a little bit more variation to the sky Also want to paint this small part here as well. Forgot about it. I just want to take off this light bluish purple here and there and then taking this darker purple this will be the darkest color for the sky um, now we can already start to see much more contrast in the sky between the clouds Now to break off the purple, I'm going to take this mid pink to fill in some areas.
but just want to add more of this light blue purple. Also just want to add more pink here. So now that the sky is covered, I'm going to switch over to my dry blending brush and I'm going to start blending my colors, colors together. So with a very soft hand, I'm going to move my brush in the direction and shape of the clouds. I just quickly want to add more of this light color on top. My first layer was still a bit too thin, too much turpentine, so um, it dried a bit and I will struggle to blend it nicely with the other colors without making it look dirty from the blending brush. That's much better. So if you struggle to blend your uh, paints and your colors together, it's just possibly because you add too much turpentine or your layer of paint were just too thin and it dried a bit. Also remember to frequently wipe your brush clean on a paper towel or cloth but please do not wet your brush uh, to remove excess paint. This will help to keep the colors in the sky and not end up with a muddy purple color across the whole sky. Now after blending, I will just touch up areas like the highlighted areas especially of the clouds to create that shine or recreate that contrast.
just even softer than before I'm just gonna blend out that very sharp edges okay so now moving on to our mountain taking our small angled brush dip the brush in some clean turpentine and just softly press out the most turpentine you don't need to dry it out or wipe it against a cloth or paper towel for this step we want the paint to flow so we're gonna need a little bit more more um, turpentine in the paint so taking our darkest brown mixture and with all sides of the angled brush um, we're just going to create some random and different brush strokes here and there If you struggle to apply the paint in this way, um, you can just add more um, turpentine or water with acrylics um, so the paint can just flow easier. And as you can see, I create random lines in different directions, different thickness, dots, etc. Um, it might look weird and abstract at this stage, and it is normal. Um, this is basically creating the rocks or stone effects of the mountain and it sticks out above the snow Moving on to the front of the mountain, we will switch to the dark blue grey colour using both dark colours and doing exactly the same all across the mountain. So I will be using this bluish colour more here at the bottom, whereas the dark brown more at the top of the mountain. Just continuing with the process until we are satisfied. If I want to paint large areas or larger areas, I keep my brush flat, but for really small spots, I turn my uh, brush to the angled side. The sharper pointy side and this is why i love the angled brush um, because it can really create both really small and also much bigger brush strokes all with one brush
So we can already start seeing our or imagine our Rocky Mountain um, but now we need to start adding in some snow. So taking this bluish grey colour we will start painting in some shadows on top of our darker burnt sienna underlayer. So the light is coming from the left side casting shadow onto the right side of the mountain. this pink color and start filling in some areas So I'm going to switch to this very slightly darker pink moving down the mountain because as we're moving down the mountain it will come more purple and then blue as the sun sets and only casts light at the highest point of the mountain. And obviously painting in oils will also mean to be careful around the dark spots or the rocky areas 
uh, we painted before and it's okay um, to let some burnt sienna, our first acrylic layer, to shine through. Okay, so now moving on to adding some of this blue. Obviously, mostly here at the bottom, as the cool colors will give that shadow appearance, whereas the warmer colors and purples and pinks and yellows will show that warmth of the sun rays on the top of the mountain. some of this purple next I thought it was a bit too similar in value to the blue and decided to use this lighter purple instead the one we use for the sky
Now also adding some of this lighter purple for even more contrast. Basically where I imagine light will fall on the snow or lighter areas. And now I'm just gonna be switching between the purples to create more definition in the foreground. Moving to the top, I'm going to take this bright yellow we mix basically adding it to the highest points where you can imagine the sun will shine on some here on the very edges of the mountain and also between these rocky areas here and there Now cleaning our brush and taking this bright pink 
to bring the yellow and the dark pink together again if you're painting in oil paint you don't have to blend the colors yet Adding some highlighted areas on the top of the dark pink here. Just also adding some random colors to the background in here as well. So I'm not going into too much detail here um, as, it, as this mountain is more in the distance and originally wanted it to fade out into the sky or background. But we'll get to that bit later. Okay, now for the blending part, I'm switching again to my dry blending brush and I'm just softly going to blend my colors together very carefully and barely touching the canvas with my brush and also wiping my brush clean regularly. You can definitely use a smaller blending brush if you have one. That will definitely help in areas or in the smaller areas or rocky areas. So I barely touched the canvas, it's very soft, especially over these rocky areas. But you don't have to worry if you smudge them a little bit. We'll go over the dark colors um, after blending, but just be careful to smudge that dark color into the lighter colors. It's not really supposed to, um, because we use a lot more turpentine in those colors, so they will be a lot um, drier than our light colors.
now taking our dark blue color we will go over those rocky areas maybe even create a few extra here and there where you feel like it and you can also um, add more black to the color if you feel like the, col the color isn't dark enough mountain here at the back as well And now for some refinement and detail, I will use this small detail brush and add some lighter purple around some of the mountain rocks to give it that more like three-dimensional look.
we can already see the difference that makes. Now I'm also going to use my round flat brush to add in some more darker blue areas here to create that depth or that contrast. This stage is basically refining, um, adding more detail here and there, uh, according to your own taste. I am basically adding more highlights and shadows and details where I imagined they would go. And the highlighted areas around the rocks I mostly paint on the left side where basically the light is coming from.
also just want to add more light to this area here to create more contrast in the foreground as well <laughs> and just using my finger to softly blend out the sharp edges of the highlights here and there you can of course use a brush I basically just keep layering and adding all the different colors that we've mixed um, creating that interesting look adding random brush strokes different colors I'm just going with the flow basically perfecting the painting until I'm happy and satisfied with the result so yeah So this is where I'll be ending this video or tutorial for you guys. However, <laughs> I did continue on the back mountain a little. Like I said earlier, I felt like I wanted it to be blurred into the background a little more. But because of many layers of wet paint, the blending went totally sideways. And I ended up ruining the back mountain completely. So I wasn't happy with it and I kept trying to fix it. Which is a hard thing to do when you have many layers of wet paints. Um, so I'm not going to go through the process, but you are obviously more than welcome to watch me ruin it for the ne next few seconds. <laughs> So 
so i hope you enjoyed painting along or maybe just watching the video if you tried this painting please tag me and color by felix on instagram so we can share it on our stories and i would really love to see your recreations on this piece so thank you for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day happy painting bye